It's high noon in Kingston, Jamaica on the Bridge 99 FM and we welcome you to the public eye. The Honorable Pernal Charles Sr. and myself are the hosts on this program and we thank you for being a part of the Bridge Nation by tuning in to 99.135709 on the FM dial. What we do on this station is to link with our friends who live anywhere and everywhere elsewhere in the world. That's a good purpose for broadcasting. It keeps the nation together. We want to strengthen this medium. In just a few minutes, we'll be connecting with Erwin Clare on our sister station, Irie Jam Radio in New York for the Global Connection Hour, which now begins at 12 noon until 1 o'clock because of daylight savings time in the United States. It's an hour ahead of us in Jamaica now. And remember, you can also watch our live stream at www.thebridge99fm.com, wherever you are in the whole world. Follow us on Instagram at thebridge99fm <clears throat> and subscribe to our YouTube channel, bridge99fm. And you can keep up with all the happenings by downloading the bridge99fm app in the Google Play Store and the Apple Store. We'll tell you what our phone numbers are. 876-676-4996. And those in the tri-state area of the United States can join us. 1-888-546-8742. I'll say it again. 1-888-546-8742. We'd love to hear from you. In the Global Connection, later on this morning, this afternoon, we'll be hearing from Professor Mona Weber, marine biologist and ecologist and director and senior lecturer at the Center for Marine Studies at the University of the West Indies. Have you heard of this huge deposit of sargassum, that's what we call seaweed, which is coming to our shores, the shores of the Caribbean and the eastern United States, and what's going to be the impact especially for the environment and the tourism product. And the father of the Minister of Agriculture in Jamaica has been asking, couldn't we use some of it for fertilizer? And I share that question. Tune in to us with Professor Mona Weber <clears throat> later on this hour. And yet later than that, Steve MacDonald, the redoubtable president and founder of Yard Market in Toronto, will join us for a discussion about Prime Minister Holness inviting social media sensation Peanut Dread to Parliament. Can you imagine this foul mouth man? What was he doing in Parliament? Did somebody wash out his mouth before he came? I wonder. And then Dennis Chung, Chartered Accountant and now General Secretary at the Jamaica Football Federation, <clears throat> will also be a guest. He's been concerned, as we have been on this program, about the increase in productivity of our workforce, all of us in Jamaica, and especially the public service, which is now costing us much more. Well, how are we going to go better than this 1%, 2% growth that is being projected for the next several years in Jamaica? Stay with us. It's a full agenda, spiced by your thoughts, your calls, your correspondence. Here we are. Morning, sir. Afternoon, sir. Morning, sir. <laughs> what is the name of the young man who you say the prime, is a man or a woman? With the, the prime minister invited. Pe Peanut Dread is a man. A man. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what does he do? Cuss bad word. No man. Come on. Man. I'm telling you. If you watch him on social media, he has some pithy comment. But he 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 he, he, he he's one of the foulest mouths that you can hear. But he has good things too. Ah, uh, I mean, in, in short supply. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, some of the politicians these days seem to be saying some things that um, are not nice. Like what? Like calling me a fool. Yes. And yeah. a dumb, yeah. unwanted call with uh, monkey one time. Uh-huh, me too. Uh, uh, uh -huh. you're, referring like to, you're referring to Mark Golding, the leader of the opposition. Well, uh-huh. Uh, you know, well... Uh -huh. Yes, you are. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, and, and I, I don't support that, but, I, but you know better than I how mouth fly on, on political platform. Yes, because I had fly my mouth too. I remember my first presentation in 1966 <laughs> in Highgate. Confession is good for the soul. I said to the large group of JLP supporters. Uh -huh. Make sure you vote for the Labour Party because remember, Parson 
christen them, pick them, fuss, <laughs> and a shawl. Yes. And boy, the next day it was headlined uh-huh. for the labor, for the government yes. to state whether or not yes. Charles oh, is speaking, speaking on, on behalf, behalf of the government. Right? Okay. And, and that uh-huh. only labor right going to eat and yes. only labor right going to get work. And, yes. Uh-huh. And they had which to, was probably I, true. Was, it was your friend, uh-huh. Hector Winter, yes. who came to my rescue and uh-huh. said, oh, come on. It's a young guy, just came out of university, uh-huh. hot-headed. Yes. And, you know, uh-huh. we, we the more respect that. Let's yeah. just take him under control right. and show him the better way and let's move on. Right. And, and they agree. Uh-huh. I, well, I was, you know, um, we, I think that we, we need... Is there, a, is there a difference in what you say on a political platform from what you say in Parliament? Yes. Okay, yes, and, and, and what is that difference? What's the essence of that difference? This yes. most experienced parliamentarian, you, you, this retired Speaker of the House of Representatives, tell us what is the difference? The essence is that what you say in the House is documented okay. and present before you uh-huh. what to say and what not to say. And, and the rules. It's it, called the rules yeah. of Parliament. Oh. Outside, you're free for boss a thing. I see. <laughs> you know? Okay. But you have to, that also is what. <laughs> Not only by your mother or your teacher uh-huh. or somebody you respect, uh-huh. but you look around. I told you about my busting a thing crossroad. Yes. When the busman almost hit me down. Yes. And a lady said, Mr. Charles. Oh, my goodness. No, nothing. Company. And I, I, I had to drive out fast and said, <laughs> sorry, mom. <laughs> you, had, you had the grace to do that. I wonder what our New York audience is thinking of, of this discourse and this happening. Irwin Clear, greetings. Greetings, gentlemen, and to your listeners as well. And, of course, we are joining our listenership with yours. Thank you. Irwin, what, what, what did you say wrong that you, were, you, you had to be brought under control by some old lady in the district, older man or some father. No, there's always, there's always a result for that. I get a spanking. Done. <laughs> it's done. But the, 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 the justice was, was swift running. It, it didn't... It's it, either you, a spanking you, or, a, or a, you, you have a conk in the head. I, I, I give you a quick story here. I remembered when we transitioned from short pants to long pants and I got mine. And of course, they, 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 they rolled up so far up the pants that, you know, I could wear this pants for the next 10 years as I grow. But anyway, <laughs> so my grandmother said to me, don't play no marbles. I enjoy playing marbles. Of course, I went to school. I did play marbles. So when I went home, my grandmother said to me, did you play marbles? Of course. No, grandma, I didn't play marbles. Of course, I'm taking off my trousers and there was a red dirt on the knee section. <laughs> Need, needless to say, uh-huh. the, <laughs> the, the, the guava. The, the pimento whip was on my back in a jiffy Aye. and then and then for the next semester i was the only <laughs> friends among me i was the only one wearing short short pants and all my friends <laughs> so you know well, serve you right exactly and that's the kind of justice and that's the kind of punishment needs when you break the rules you get it done and be gone be done well <laughs> no. you know um w- w- uh, uh, there, there's always a tension between um, what is, is, is appropriate and what is insulting. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I, I've never agreed with the Roy Chuck who insists that Parliament is not a Sunday school. Um, I don't think th- that is an apt comparison. And it certainly doesn't help us to, to overcome uh, congenital differences if we if we spend our time cussing one another which implies disrespect mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and unfortunately and all of us maybe have, have, have sinned um, which which transmits into the public domain very very quickly before you start before you start we're talking about the the situation in 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 in, in cabin in parliament sir? in parliament yes the the, the whole yes. non-civic approach that we deal with things each other yes yeah, so and we had an incident mm-hmm. yesterday maybe you haven't yes. brought been brought up to date yeah if but you could put in pr- perspective for well, us it, please um the, the the minister of finance nigel clark um uh, issued a canard against Mark Golding, who he said had um, called uh, labor rights uh, fools, damn fools, I think, at a, on a political platform last weekend. And uh, then Angela Brown Burke got up to, to, uh, to, to chide Clark on a point of order. Um, and in the course of an interruption of her, she said, shut up your mouth so I can talk. And the, um, the Speaker of the House, you know, uh, uh, it, it, in a moment of intemperateness, let us say, um, uh, called her down 
as, as did the leader of the House, the Honorable Edmund Bartlett. So there was a walkout and a, a cuscus. And mm. at the end of the day, um, I wonder what we all are supposed to feel. I don't, I don't. And, and what examples we're setting there. Yeah. But, but, but I, I think, though, in, in all honesty, the, 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 the performances of our leaders in, in Parliament have not been have not been a great example for the nation that faces so much challenges of indiscipline amongst our youngsters and all the likes. And one have to wonder, you know, we are preaching to others to follow rules and regulations and to be civil to each other whilst our leaders aren't. That does not bode well. And, and how can we expect changes in our society at that level? Well, you know, wait, 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 let me let, yes, let, you, let me let me let me bring and something and, and to, and to, to that about bothers respect. me last night when I heard this. The political system that we are operating in Jamaica, uh -huh. the two-party system, uh -huh. which allow me to call a meeting yeah. in West Kingston, uh -huh. and all the labor rights come mm -hmm. from Central Kingston, right. but they can't go back home. Oh. Because PNP is waiting to stone them, uh -huh. or vice versa. Uh -huh. That was where we're coming from, you know. Uh -huh. Follow me? That anybody call a meeting half a tree, police have to escort them back. Why? Because the speakers yeah, and I, the platform have inflamed them. created yeah. an enemy uh -huh. with the other side yeah. to them. You know, you know one and of the either side. one of the one of the simple achievements, Erwin, of my tenure in Central Kingston. I'm not I'm not prone to boast. I don't have much to boast about. Was that the divide on Law Street, where people couldn't from one side from South Side couldn't cross into Tel Aviv or vice versa? We just broke down that entirely. Yes, yeah. nonsense. People living in the same situation, going to the same school. Uh, man and woman coming together in love, and you can't walk on the street to, to, together. That's damn nonsense. But, but, it's, but, but it's, really, it's that bad as in the family? Yeah. yeah it was. He, it was so bad yeah. that so, so husbands can we, can we and wives. But 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 but, but, but it gentlemen, has come away. It has come a far away. Yeah, 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 yes, yes, it has. But gentlemen, you just Still. said something there, Mr. Charles. That speakers, <clears throat> and when we say speakers, we 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 also give the title leaders, leaders. Because if they are commanding an attention of people, then they are obviously in a position of leadership. It is emanating from the very seat of power. So, so if, if we are to look to how we resolve that, let's start with our leadership first. Well, I thought that in order to start with the leadership, when we go to Gordon House, that's the Parliament House, yes, that instead of sitting on two sides like the British have told us to do, uh, what we should do is to mix up that change the configuration of parliament entirely and sit side by side with the person whose constituency was nearby yours or <coughs> the person whose name was in alphabetical order or anything but that it it meant that you were not divided in tribes and it meant that you had the opportunity to liaise to become friends to stop to to chat with people who may have a different political affiliation and, uh, than you uh, and, the the image, and the image of that would be a po would be powerful yeah I tabled a they motion didn't to didn't that effect. Didn't you carry a motion to Parliament? Yeah, but you do. To, no, because why? <laughs> you're, uh -huh. you're the speaker Beca now. Because you are the only reverend. Yes. In the, <laughs> that is a church yeah. presentation. No, 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 no. Oh, it's a church. No, could I tell you? I, let me level with you. Level I discussed it so, my colleague. Uh -huh. I said, Ronnie, you would like us to put labor right outside. I mean, on this side, and yeah. PNP on this side. And uh -huh. so. She said, Ron, he's the reverend uh -huh. tweets. Yeah. And that's a church thing. Oh. Mm, right? mm, the politics mm. of us. Oh, it's different. No, we don't reach us again. So, so, no. so I couldn't accept you? What do you think? So what, no. what do you think, so uh, no. Erwin? You'll be the judge. So, so there lies a challenge. There it is. Uh -huh. There it is. Is civil society now have to pressure you guys into that modus operandi? Yeah. When I, the civil society have to pressure us. In, in to, fairness, to you know, in yeah. fairness, uh, b b b very often, I would go over to the other side, whether mm. whether too, whether my side was forward. in government. And the, and the speaker stopped me. And the pe speaker stopped speaker me. Speaker stopped me from going over uh, to talk. Well, you never stopped me, but others other speakers no, no, did. No, no, Our friend from and, Mandeville. Uh -huh. I used to go over and chat with. Yeah. And he said, Mr. Charles, could you mm. stay over this side? Yeah. 
and I, I couldn't cross again well, no, after we had until people on my side. Yes, <laughs> they would they would say, "Run, come but, back." Yeah, but, yes. but, 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 let, but let me ask you this: They think Granny was, they think the granny was carrying out what they were crossing yeah, but, the floor. But let me ask you this though: Wasn't there a situation yeah. where one of the the gentlemen in Parliament, mm. who was what suspended, was now asked to sit on? Not with the government, but on another yeah, but side. But he's a buffoon. But no, I'm just saying. But I'm just saying, <laughs> the same argument here. Yeah. Who would who would have instructed him to do that? I, I don't think he, he. My understanding of this, Mr. Wright from Westmoreland, is that he 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 wouldn't need much um, encouragement. Yeah, but no, I'm just no, saying. No, but, no, but, if, if, if it's about let, the configuration us, and on, where people sit. Urban, listen to this. <laughs> let, let us examine this. Uh-huh. The standing orders. Uh-huh make a presentation that yeah. who is in government uh-huh. which is a majority party yeah. sits on the right yeah. who okay. is in the minority party right. sits on the left yeah. okay in this instance uh-huh. where does mr right falls he should bring his stool to parliament no he no has, no no, he has no running. let us let us look at it seriously <laughs> mr right falls on the, on, on the opposite side he does of government that's a joke but when would you sit with the government? Joke. If he had sat with, would, where would you have? If you were a speaker, where would you have? I would have put it? him out. No, 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 no. He has no right in there. Oh, he has, he has right. No, but no. He, here but, you go on to judge him. He has no legitimacy. Now. I am judging him. Hold, hold right. on. I've said Absolutely this. Absolutely judging him. I said a wife beater or a lady beater has on. no place in parliament. I said this to you before, and I want to say it publicly. So Erwin can judge between me and you. <laughs> All right, mm. Erwin, you see, you get a judge. Erwin, I put here is it. Yeah, yes. I have a problem, right? And I sought the support of an attorney. <coughs> and the attorney said to me, answer no question, give no statement. Anybody who comes to you, ask them to make contact that, with that, your attorney. That is in respect of criminal liability. No, we're talking about a much higher ethical responsibility. Huh. Much higher. Well, hold on. There's an ethical responsibility higher than criminal. Yes, absolutely. There's a moral mo- morality is very much higher than the law, sir. There oh, are many, oh. many well, things well, that I we am going. I am going. I am going to accept. No, I'm going to yeah. accept. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm going to accept yeah. that morality yeah, man. is higher than law. But law uh-huh. gathers out of the morality. It, it should. Eh? It should. So, so, so go back. This, so go back. This, so, it, let, so go back to your in, example. In completing the point, uh-huh. I understand. Mm that Mr. Wright was, uh, had gotten an attorney. Uh-huh. And the attorney tell him this. And the attorney said yeah, to him, <laughs> they, they are no, the attorney, a lot of, the, a lot of people. perfectly understandable. But, the, but, but that, you that would have done the same thing. That, that you would have done no, this. No. If you're an attorney. Oh, no. uh, if, I would, take, um, I would, if I'm giving advice on the law, yeah. I, would, I would do that because <laughs> that, then, is, but, that but, is the law. But, uh, there's, but there's a different, this is the trouble with us. We yeah. use, the, <laughs> may I borrow a phrase and, go, and, and, and rally up some more? Yes. In this instance, the law is not a shackle. <laughs> no, no, mercy. no, it isn't. No, I've, a, heard, I've yeah. heard that before. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, <laughs> there, yeah, is, there, yeah, is a yeah. diff, there is a higher standard. There's a higher standard of humanity of a, and of yeah. morality. Yeah. Go yeah, back to yeah. the to the seat, seating in yes. Parliament, though. Yeah. You know. But I, I think I, I think that would send a strong message. Yeah. Because because you, you, you so know the, 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 so the, whole the prime minister speaks about the need for consensus. The the opposition <laughs> speaks about the need for consensus. But you that, you were the leader in carrying all of these proposals yeah, to Parliament yeah. that headlined. Yeah. We have to be more church-like yeah, or church Christian-like. Like. Well, that's a good thing to be. Uh, right, right. And not one of them have get any traction. <laughs> and what the one, <coughs> and yet, or, or when clear, twenty-three yeah. motions I left on the on the <laughs> order paper of Parliament. You see, and one um, se- secured the attention of the honourable speaker and the leader of the house. That was to do with the upliftment of early childhood education. And there were 13 speakers on the motion from both sides of the house, all strongly in favor of that particular issue. And not one thing has been done towards it. So I am obliged to ask now, what is the purpose of it? 
They said well, nothing has been done to early childhood. To improve it? No, in the way necessary. But, but hold on, <coughs> but just going back just to that. <coughs> that's just a just fact. It, early childhood is three, still 3% of the education budget. 40% of the teachers are still not, not trained. I mean, I could go on and on. Little, there have been some little changes, but nothing like what is needed in order to attract. Oh, nothing like what is needed. Yes, sir. But, but early childhood is going on. It's going listen, on. Yes, sir. But listen, yeah. listen up, because we have to go to a break soon. Mm. Going back to that whole situation of the configuration of parliament. Right. And how we, 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 we say to our nation mm. that we are serious about working together. Yeah. It, has to start, it has to start right there. You know, it, we, we, have to, we have to demonstrate something. But we cannot continue in that hostile, toxic environment. But that's why and, Mr. And, and, Charles and, and I are here, sir. And, and I know, sir. And, and you know what people also say, too, is that you, you <coughs> guys go, go on like that in Parliament. Then when you go to your respective communities where you're all friends, you drink your wine and you're, you're champagne together. No, but, no, no, but, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, let me correct you. Red stripe beer? Let me correct you. Beer, let me correct you. It's yeah. not to all of it. He's right in <coughs> Parliament downstairs. Okay, but you don't do it publicly. Let me walk upstairs and I'm and drink. Listen, but why you guys don't do that publicly? <laughs> why? On that note, okay, on the public eye, the, the bridge, and on Ari Jam, <laughs> we take the break. When we come back, Professor Mona Weber talks about Zach Gassam, seaweed. Is it a threat or is it a good prospect? Soon come. We welcome you back to the Global Connection, where we connect with our brothers and sisters on the Bridge FM. And we join Ron Tweets and Pernell Charles in uh, the public eye. It's an open mind. Let's join them now. Gentlemen. Professor, good day to you. Welcome to the public eye. Good day to you both. Thank Good you very much. Here. And we're linking up with Erwin <laughs> Clare in New York. The Bridge 99 FM, the station we're on, has a strong diaspora connection. So uh, we're magnifying your voice many times. Good day, Professor. Good day to you, sir. <clears throat> Professor Weber, help us. We've seen um, international news indicating that this um, wave of, can it be called that, the scourge of sargassum is heading across the Atlantic towards the eastern coast of the United States and may affect the Caribbean. What is sargassum and as far as you know is it coming our way and what might it, what might it do to us? Okay, what is sargassum is, is the first critical thing to understand. Sargassum is um, marine algae. It's a brown alga that normally grows and survives well, performs very important functions in the Sargasso Sea in the, in the North Atlantic. Um, so it is, a, it is not a new or an invasive species. It's something that's been around from the days of Columbus um, when he thought his, his ships would get snarled in this mass of seaweed in the Sargasso Sea. What is happening now since 2011 is sargassum from the Sargasso Sea has moved through, due to climate change, very severe weather in 2011, and it was deposited just outside the Caribbean um, off the coast of Brazil, where it's been fed by nutrients. And so we have a new Sargasso Sea a new bloom of large masses of sargassum just outside the Caribbean, and it is brought by the Caribbean current through the Caribbean on its way to the, to the Gulf of Mexico and Florida. Wow. Now, um, uh, the Honorable Colonel Charles was telling me earlier off the air that he remembers, was it last year? Yes, yes. In St. Thomas, <coughs> that there was this uh, unusual deposit of what he understood to be sargassum. Would he be right? Absolutely. It's been happening since 2011. In 2015, Jamaica saw its greatest amounts on the north coast on the north and coast that was like 300 times normal amounts so and since then it's been coming almost every year is it an annual occurrence does it have anything to do with an annual cycle or is it is it random it's 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 come every year since 2015 it started in 2011 but jamaica did not get a lot 
2013 was a blank year, but since then it's been coming every year. And, and usually there's a saga some season. By about mm -hmm. April, March, April, you'll see the algae washing up in larger than normal quantities. Um, it peaks July and by September, October, it's, it's diminishing. November mm. is gone. That's the usual cycle. Professor, Professor. Pro Professor, uh, um, the people in St. Thomas, spreading from like Prospect all the way back to Bowden, you had to hold your nose if you can not stay in that area. Uh, put your Absolutely. windows up. It's a very strong odor, which is unpleasant. However, yes. I thought that we had discovered a new industry mm. because it looks like something that if you grown it and it Burn could it. be a fertilizer. What? It, what? Where are we in that? Absolutely, sargassum is algal biomass. It me, it algae can be used for a variety of purposes, and one of which is is fertilizer. We can compost it. There are companies now in St. Lucia and other parts of the Caribbean that are producing liquid fertilizer from the sargassum extracts. So it, 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 is, it has tremendous potential for crops. Persons have even tried producing bioplastic from sargassum because there's so much of it around. The trouble is, when it's left on the beach, when it's left um, in the water, shallow water, it begins to rot. And once it rots, it releases hydrogen sulfide gas that smells like rotten eggs. And I, that's probably what you were smelling. When it rots, it, it's a horrible <clears throat> scourge. Uh, professor, Owen. Professor, going back to that, uh, I, was, I was going to head there now as, as it relates to the energy value of sargassum. Yes. Are we positioning ourselves for that opportunities in Jamaica? Because we recognize now this is a yearly situation. It, it, it does. Are, are we in a position where we can commercialize that? Because it's, it's something we can almost plan for now. Yes, indeed. It, it is being said that this is a new normal. We, we have record levels coming this year. And this year it's coming earlier than normal. So January was a record landfall in places like Barbados, for example for sargassum. So in places like Barbados, they are developing a biogas industry based off sargassum and I think it's um, um, sugar waste. They, no, no. They, um, yes, yes. I think you might have seen it in the, yes, in the newspaper. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they are, they are proposing to produce biogas, biomethane, using sargassum. Now we've done some experiments. It is very possible. The um, Scientific Research Council tested for us how we could use sargassum with like their normal pig slurry. And it, it works well. You have to macerate it, break it up first. Um, but it is possible to drive a, a biomethane system mm -hmm. with the sargassum seaweed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the other, <coughs> sorry, sorry, Ron. The other question I want to ask them, with, with, with this sargassum mm -hmm. now, of course, when we look at our fragile economy or fragile industry and i say fragile because so many things impacts it tourism because yes. this also to have an impact on the cruise cruise shipping industry because it gets into their turbines there are problems there but the impact now on our tourism product well on the what, beaches what, the beaches Beach. and our tourism product yeah absolutely what? we have been fortunate and, and and i say this with reservation we um minister charles there it's it's been more of a south coast phenomenon um over the last few years and so fewer of the tourist beaches have been affected but the fishing beaches and and the saint thomas and helsha and um and and along where many of our fishers um there's a beach in in welcome beach in carinda that is severely affected and the the fishers have not been able to to ply their trade literally when when sargassum is in in other parts of the caribbean where the whole island depends on tourism like barbados um parts of the yucatan mexico they actually prepare for sargassum it, it, it's like the army is called out when it's sargassum season and they erect booms like like the booms we use for oil spill containment yes they have similar structures that they put across their important tourist beaches and then they they literally reap the sargassum from 
the outer part of the boom. So it's it's quite an effort. It's extremely expensive, over a hundred thousand US dollars a month that they spend to cle to keep the beach free of sargassum. Well, it can be a commercial entity. Activity. People will be very happy to. I think to. so. I yeah. think we have to treat it as a crop. It's, yes. it's free algal biomass. A lot of people culture algae to get the, the, the value from it. This is free algae. It has its issues, but I don't think Jamaica is taking on the, the opportunity that we could have from, from wow. the sargassum. Wow. Um, Professor Weber, issue. there's been a suggestion that there's arsenic in the sargassum. Do you know of that? Yes, there is. That there are high concentrations of the inorganic arsenic, <coughs> which is a bad one. So how, how can we how can we put that into our soil as fertilizer, ma'am? And there are ways to remove it. So so the, the the company in Saint Lucia that has been producing um, fertilizer from sargassum, they have the technology to remove it, and and so the others. So we are cautioned to just take up the mass from the beach and dry it and use it. We should not do that. But certainly for if if we if, if an entrepreneur decided to develop a sargassum, uh, a, a fertilizer factory based off sargassum, it certainly could be supported. And you but, see, if, if you can dry the material when it's in large amounts and it stores very well dry, and then mm -hmm. when the season is, is waning, you still have raw material to drive your production. So we... We really would like to get persons interested in exploring the uses related to producing safe um, plant tonics and, and fertilizers, and also in, in using it for biogas. Because mm. that now it can be used raw. You simply macerate the weed and yeah. you will have to mix it with another um, digestible material but mm. it, it digests well to produce biogas. W professor. W where do we store it now, Professor? This, yeah. when, we, when we rake it up off we're the beach? Yeah, yeah. What do we do what with we it? Do with yes. it at That's a very good question. We, we're not raking it up off enough of our beaches. Sometimes it's left on the beach. If, if you ever go along Hellshire when Sargassum season is in, the, the beach smells and the, and the material is just there rotting in the, in the foreshore just mm. off the beach. But, but, but when they remove it, they tend to put it against the back of the beach, near what we call the dunes. So, for example, Helsha, the, where the, the land begins to rise before you get to the road, yes, the sargassum is piled in that area. And you really have to turn it so that it doesn't start to rot. It, but, but, it needs to dry, and then it can be stored for a long time. The, at that point, though, we, we, may, we mentioned arsenic. What's the yeah. challenge with that now, in in that form, without it being removed? It does not That's have it. an impact on the soil? Yes, it will, it will affect our, our soil. It will, it will affect people who try to use it. We have grown um, various crops using sargassum compost, and we are not satisfied with the quantities of arsenic, the percentage of arsenic. Um, it shouldn't exceed, I think, 50 ppm, and we were getting like 100 wow. in, in some of the material grown with the, with the sargassum compost. Uh, so I you share... can just pick it up yeah. and use it for right. growing crops. Mulch. All right, right. Professor, some little people are listening to you, yes. like out in the <laughs> St. Thomas, St. Elizabeth, Westmoreland area. Uh, they, are not, they are not able to get tractors and this to get this thing together um right is, is, is what, what 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 plans the what? government have also what? if it right. can be mobilized and store because the fisher folks and all of these people are suffering well yes, what indeed. what's the message you're going to give them because according to what i have seen on television a lot of these things coming here this year Maybe uh, than yes. any other year. Well, is there We're is that a huge quantities this year? Yeah, really? Yeah. You know, there yeah. are countries in the Caribbean that collect and and ship yeah, containers yeah, yeah, of sargassum. Yeah. Oh yes, you see really. Places yes. where they want the algal mm -hmm. biomass to be mm -hmm. for manufacturing. Yes, yes. Um, we have not explored those opportunities. So okay, when no. our fishers can't get fish because the sargassum is in. They could they could collect sargassum, right? Yes. They could, right, or they could <laughs> ship it fresh, 
but there are no markets developing. The world is looking at the Caribbean because the, what it's are we an doing? unprecedented <laughs> occurrence. But, but, but no, we are <clears throat> not getting traction yet to, to see the material as useful. It's still just a nuisance. No. Professor, I was in, I was in St. Anne recently at a particular <laughs> beach that it was impacted earlier part of the year. And I saw that when they raked it off the beach, they were burning it. Is that a good idea? No, burning? I wouldn't advise burning at all. So, um, so if we're, it's going to be burned, it would be in a kiln. I've heard of a yeah. person burning the dry sargassum like fuel, and it's a tough algae, you know, it, it probably can burn. Yeah. But it would be in a, in a controlled control. kiln or something where you can control the gases that it releases. But you see, you see, what, what this is saying to us, gentlemen, is that there's a serious public education that is required in this because this could be a situation that has opportunity, but at the same token, if not handled carefully, it could be very damaging to our health. Well, that is so. But and like that is why I was asking Professor for, for to advice. send a message out yes. because the little man yeah, and his side, to the thing yeah. come up on the sea, yeah. can't go swish, and it can't stay there. And, and I don't think government have any program that they would heard. go and do any collection yeah. and storing uh, our collection and destroy. What's a meteorological pro a projection, uh, Professor Weber? Because is, is it going to come? Is it going to touch Jamaica, or it, 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 is it's it's likely? It's very likely uh -huh. based on the quantities out there. Barbados was cleaning their beaches. They said sixteen hundred truckloads a day. Fifteen hundred um, truckloads a day. <laughs> Oh. And they, <laughs> it will take one to two months, depending on the strength of the currents. But it, 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 in a month or less, we will have it as Here. they were having it. Whoa. Um, the National Environment and Planning Agency, NEPA, uh -huh. they have a system. They, they are responsible for beaches. Yeah. And they have a system that advises persons how to handle sargassum. Yeah. Um, they usually visit beaches, especially yeah. when they, they hear it's coming in in huge quantities. But and at the university, we are trying to develop a, a sargassum beaching severity index, something that will advise you on where it's likely to come. But that's very important because yeah. what yeah. I'm thinking of when, when, when extremely high values are placed on what is called beach property or seafront property, yes. this changes that, that, that matrix the, the whole, entirely. Uh, oh, yeah. And well, go on to further run it. It it the tourism yeah. that major potential yeah, is, yeah. is really beach you yeah. know, of course of, of it is tourism of beach. course yeah. it is so so, so, the, so the question is gentlemen it, we we have heard of the resilience conferences being held by the tourism ministry I'd have to believe that this is part of their discussion as well well I hope so we we, we need to 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 uh, interrogate that let's take the break uh, Erwin Professor Weber when we come back um shifting gr ground a little. The United Nations has made an extraordinary prediction today that the world is facing a critical water shortage. You're an environmentalist. Is there substance to this and how might it affect us? Soon come back. This is the public eye on the bridge with Ira Jam on Global Connection. This is a public eye on the Bridge 99 FM, John, linking right for the Global right. Connection with Ira Jam in New York, talking with Professor Mona Weber of the University of the West Indies. She's an environmentalist. She's a marine scientist. Erwin, are you there? Linking up. P yes, Professor sir. Weber, are you hearing us? Yes, I'm Thank hearing you. Thank you so much. Yeah, this yeah. morning, the United Nations um, convened a water, a world water conference, I believe, with the, the frightening um, subtitle that the world may, may face a water crisis in the, in the near future. Uh, is that hyperbole? And if not, does it have any application to, uh, to, to countries like ours? Indeed. Um, I, I don't think it's... it's an exaggeration or, or yes. um, too, too soon. There are parts of the world now where there is already a water crisis. And they, 26% of, of global populations do not have access to clean drinking water. In our context, Jamaica has had good, safe, some of the best quality water for years, drinking water. And, and water available for all our uses and we've taken it for granted and so in the last few years 
as our population grows, as our climate changes around us, um, we have been facing issues with our water. And I think, too, we are not being careful enough with how we pollute our aquifers, our water reservoir systems that are below ground, I think are more threatened by our practices. For example, we still have a lot of pit latrines and soak away pits. We, we need to change all of those systems. We need to monitor our agricultural practices. We are not just affecting the surface water, we're affecting our, our underground water. And, and that will lead Jamaica to lose its, mm. it, 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 we are now one of the best places in the Caribbean for water quality. And we lose that standing um, and have difficulty supplying our population with potable water if we're not careful. If we don't the, Professor, let me, just, let, me, let me ask you about one. <laughs> millions and millions of gallons of water are flowing from the Blue Mountains, somewhere from the Portland side, the St. Thomas side, into the sea. When I say millions, it is flowing, I don't know if there is a slow down flow, or it's continuously growing. We haven't made any attempt to catch any of them, well, we catch some, because some come to Kingston, some little tributaries. But uh, how do you remember about? a few a few years ago, even with that, I mean, we think of Portland as a parish with an abundance of water. No shortage, rains all the time, there are rivers and so on. Remember a couple of years ago, there was literally a drought. Some said fall dried up, something yes. none of us had heard about before. Yes. It, it, everything is being threatened. So we, we, mm. we may, we find that places that used to be wet and predictably wet because of the climate issues are not so anymore. And so we, we really have to revisit our models. We can do catchment in new areas. I agree with you, um, Minister. But we also have to think about how else we can safeguard the water mm. that we have. Well, we're certainly not safeguarding it, Erwin mm. Purnell, when we are building 12 and 13 floor apartments and townhouses. Where, how the water will go up there? When it is scarce. No, we don't have no, a problem. But not only we don't have a problem getting the water up there. There are modern pumps oh. that can get right. the water up there. Up. Well, <laughs> no, well, let, me tell you, let me tell you what the problem that we uh -huh. have, whether or not from the resource. Yeah. We don't. Well, I was minister, so I can tell you we have several wells uh -huh. closed down in Kingston now. Yes. That's right? what Doctor Weber is saying. Can, can open them when when we need. But they brackish water, don't they? Yeah, but guess what? Guess, guess what? Well, we don't right. have to. We don't have to go underground for the, right down at at, at Marcus Garvey Bay. Uh -huh. Millions of gallons. Yes. And I, I Moses Matalan of yeah. great yeah, said memory, yes, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. great skill came to us one day and said, "Listen, it's five percent brackish. Yes. Millions of gallons of water. Mm. Mm. I don't think we have gone in the commercialization sure. of." giving pure water and i'm fretting and i say this because i want dr weber to hear yeah every day i see a new bottle of water coming on the on, on the <laughs> road where the hell is it coming from right, some well. of them don't have no label <laughs> what are we drinking <laughs> buy pet peeves. <laughs> more bottle water means more plastic exactly D dr weber with the time we have left i really wanted to get your your take on this and this has to do with the mangroves because the more we see these monstrosities of structures going on our beachfronts, and I'm looking at one now down there in Hanover, I think it is, where the mangroves outside of, is that Green Island, will probably be challenged. Can you talk to us about whether or not we're managing those type of situations well for the benefit of the nation? Yes, we, we are trying to get to, to the stage, and I think we are getting the attention of everybody now about the importance of mangroves, where we do not remove any more mangrove forests from our from our coastlines. And that is both because of their protection of the coastline, stopping erosion, but also because they can now, they are now reputed to be the best things for removing carbon. Mm -hmm. And so we are quantifying the carbon in our mangroves and, and that carbon is to be valued so we can we can talk about carbon trading and carbon credits. So we're trying to improve the value and how the public and developers and visitors regard mangroves. 
And I think we are getting, we are making good traction. So hold on, I need to clarify. Dr. Mona Weber is saying that we should not destroy any more mangrove forests, even to build a 1500 uh, super <laughs> resort that is supposed yeah. to. Even to do that. Uh, uh, so, listen so. to that now. <laughs> they have to I, find somewhere else. I tell you what, I tell you what, <laughs> what, what they doing. Yeah. They can remove a mangrove uh -huh. without destroying it. But they have to lift it. And, and put, put it somewhere, somewhere else. else. Yeah. But what about That's the protection a, no, of that area well, now? Well, what is happening? And exactly. Is that the coal the burners. The of that yeah. area is you just the Yes, flooding, yes. Go ahead, doctor. <laughs> no. Because the, the marine systems have their functions in place. The seagrass help to keep the sand for the beach. The mangroves, is, they're tremendous buffers for the land. And so you will lose your land when you remove the mangroves. And then when it rains and water runs through the property, the mangroves soak up the nutrients and the fresh water so it doesn't flow into the sea and damage your coral reef that the tourists want to snorkel on. So <laughs> there now has to be, and it's growing, an understanding of how the systems work to protect us if they're kept in place. This is an epic interview, and yes. it, 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 it ought to affect uh, investment policy. It ought to affect economic yeah. uh, priorities, because yeah. uh, all, all things put together, we, we simply can't, can't ignore the effect no. of nature and uh, it, its vicissitudes on the various things that we are doing with our coastline, can we? Indeed. Indeed. Well, there you are. Uh, and, the, uh, you know, before she goes, you know, you know my pet project has always been the contiguous aquifers in the cockpit country. We cannot damage those. And that's Absolutely. why I will continue to say no mining of bauxite well, in the cockpit country. You know, I support that entirely on the, on the same basis that you do and, and, and broader too. Um, largely educated by what has happened to the, to the communities that you come from in St. Anne mm -hmm, and that mm -hmm, uh, Minister mm -hmm. Charles comes from similarly. Um, I, I hope that that, that, that that will be vindicated. But it is a, a shame and a reproach that the government of Jamaica is in fact supporting the pillage of those resources yes. in our name Indeed. and presumably yeah. from our good when every indica every scientific indication is say is saying that it, it is quite the opposite and and the government will tell you that they're going by the this instruction of the dr webbers and others no dr webber mm -hmm. doesn't support mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who is saying uh, but, but we, you know, we have to we have to protect our natural resources yeah, well, and I think that that doctor i am that. really I'm, I'm i'm trying to get you to instruct me <laughs> right as to Indeed. who is it in these environmental organizations that are telling what we can do what we shouldn't do but i want to take Rani on one point Rani. Mm -hmm. Every fifteen, every every five story house that built in Jamaica have about uh, five, twelve, sixty rooms apartments. Yes, sir. If we did not have one of those, uh -huh. where would we put tw t sixty ho homes for people? Renew the yeah. inner city. What? <laughs> Renew the inner city where you already have some yeah. sewerage or so dated, yes. where already you have water pipe, you have utilities, uh, you have road. But people And you have we have you have you have inner city people waiting for that renewal. Yes well, you do. Yes. And but 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 you use class and 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 stushness to to to, to <laughs> prevent you from doing exactly what w we ought to be doing. What a Gentlemen. shame. What a shame. Gentlemen. Professor Weber, thank Gentlemen. you so much for your information you give us. Watch your sargassum and help us with further information when yes. you can. We'll do, we'll do. Thank you so much for the opportunity. All the best. All Professor the best. Mona Weber, okay, uh, Dr. Marine, Dr. Marine, Dr. Weber. marine scientist, ecologist, mm -hmm. environmentalist mm -hmm. on the issue of the sargassum yeah, and also is. on issues to do with mangroves mm -hmm. and, and with water. water. Irwin Clare, what do you derive from? What, how would but you sum up that interview? You know, what this are you going to say to your listeners? This is powerful. We need to do more of this because you see, it's, a, it's a noise, I know it's a balancing act for government because they're looking at how, how they how they find resources to to balance budgets and stuff like that. But at the risk of our our environment, I think that's long term detrimental. And we need. You remember to what happened to Esau and mm. Jacob? <laughs> yes, Esau sold out. His heritage. Yes. That is what we are doing. When I listen to you, it bothers me a little sometimes. <laughs> really? I tell you why. Why? Listen. If you are well, to pay the police, uh -huh. uh, hold on. pay the teachers, yeah. hold on, hold on. pay yes. the civil servants, I'm ready yes. to talk. I'm ready to I'll fix the roads. I'm, yes. I'm ready to uh -huh. answer you. Fix the roads. Yes. Do all of these things. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
Don't you have to earn some money? Can yeah, you, pay? you have to earn money? Can you pay enough taxes to do that? Yes. Listen, okay. gentlemen, you, gentlemen, you, you guys can have a conversation. Uh -huh. And I know it's going to be a spirited one. Uh -huh. And please let me have the results next week, all right? <laughs> Take care, <laughs> all the best man. to you. Thanks all so much for the global connection, sure. Urban Care, Ira Jam. The issue, p p as I see it, okay, is, is a very clear one. The, the budget of the Ministry of Agriculture yes. is about one quarter of what it should be. If we really decided that we were going to supply that which Steve McDonald later on is going to tell us is in such demand yes. and we don't sell, if we could reverse the huge current account deficit that we have where we're spending $6 billion on imports and, and, and earning $1 billion, rough figures, on exports, yes? Then we could be we, we, yeah, but we running, be talking. It's easy yes? to talk like that. It is, and it, but it's somebody to, have to yeah, create. And, and the disappointment that I have yes. with with the political apparatus of which you and I have been a part, yes, is that we are not brave enough to deal with that reality. And so what we do is to form fool of ourselves. I'm not speaking about any individual now, so don't, <laughs> don't put me in that class. <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> where 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 we we chip at the edges. And so we will eventually get into the heart of the cockpit country. We will take out more mangrove. Yes, we will, we, we will do all the things that are wrong instead of providing for ourselves with the wherewithal that God has given us. Well, I, hear you, you, I hear you saying it's, it's, that I'm <coughs> hearing you saying yeah. that we will not tax anymore. We'll have to, okay, do all of that, but we have to get the money from you to pay. No, but look here, sir. So we have to tax it look, to pay. Look here, sir. If you have production, taxation is inevitable. That's what you do. You, 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 you produce to the highest level, and then you take some of that in order to serve the common good, which is the, the pursuit of government. The no. problem, the, the, there, is, the, the, there are a whole heap of people in Jamaica. The tax people will tell you themselves who, should, who pay no tax at all. But they live like 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 kings, they export money from Jamaica. Yeah, you know, you know that. You know, you know that. You know that some people in Central Kingston uh -huh. want you to be prime minister, right? Oh yes. yes. Well, um, and and I think that what you have just said, uh -huh. you'd have been able to bring it into fort yeah. because yes, yeah. there are a lot of us mm -hmm. in Jamaica mm -hmm. who could be and should be paying more taxes and take the pressure off. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and so the roads that are not fixed, yes. the schools that know. are not fixed, yes. right? Would make a the big water difference. system that is only in a few areas. We got to break. All of this. Yes. So we would have someone to do it. We're talking about a spiritual as well as an economic revolution as we break for the one o'clock time signal and messages on the public eye in the bridge, 99 FM. Stay tuned. Nine minutes after one in Kingston, Jamaica. This is the public eye on Bridge 99 FM with the Honorable Colonel Charles and myself. I've been getting some sent on country folklore from this man, you see. <laughs> you wouldn't understand. Steve McDonald, you might. You come from Westmoreland, don't? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Good afternoon to you and your listeners. Hi, <laughs> Steve. Well, how you doing? Well, welcome home. <laughs> Very good. Thank I was trying to tell you, Westmoreland is a flat area, right? Kind of. Yes, but, but really the, most of it. When sun take that, it glisten. Yeah. You know, you know, or it glisten. Yeah, no. When you look out there, you see the sun, the heat. The heat, just rising. That's coming up. Yes, uh-huh. Well, so how do I get water that's out the there? Savannah Plains. That's the Savannah, Savannah Plains. Plains. Savannah Plains. Savannah Plains, yes, mm. yes, yes. But up yes. in the north is mountainous. I'm sure that, but, but there oh, are yes. some lovely streams and, and, and cascades coming up there, which is the point that Pernell was making, that the water is in, it, there's a lot of it, but it's sometimes it's in unlikely places, and we take it for granted rather than deploying it efficiently. That is so true. But as you know, uh, Rev, that in, in Dallaston, where I'm from, um, we have more ponds, more anything else, and, and wells, yeah. not so much streams. Yes. But in other areas of the parish, we do have uh, uh, quite a few streams. We have the Great Warren River, yes, um, that's true. which pretty much serves the um, the entire parish with water. And then yes. Sweet River, which runs Sweet into River. Um, Paradise Park sure. um, community, that side. Uh -huh. So we, we do have a few nice streams. You do. It's you always nice to go to the river, right? It is. You, you, you and Pernell know that better than, than uh, a town boy like me. Tell me about Peanut Dread now, because I, I have a I, I have a concern. I hear him over up, up, up sometimes on public media, and the man has a foul mouth. A very, a very foul mouth. And I, you know, I was 
very disappointed. Um, and he's a misogynist. They... Yes, extremely. Yeah. And, you know, I was very disappointed to see that um, the prime minister invited him to parliament mm -hmm. and as his guest. Mark you, I mean, he is free to go to parliament as, as he citizen. wants. But I think the, what the prime minister did was exalted him to a certain level, which he should not have, because... The man is talking about um, pretty much raping female. Himself, and in addition to that, said, well, well, the one I heard is he said, "Woman, you don't have to ask woman for sex. Woman, woman's body is deaf for man." And, and right, it, 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 what she have put on for him. Put on for and him. And him can take it whenever when he wants. And if, she, if if him if she not gear him can kill her or do whatever. I mean, how can you at in one moment when you're speaking about moral and values? And then at the next moment, you are talking, you have somebody like this in, 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 in or. So when, it's, um, don't you have a JLP women's movement? They must stand up against this. Well, Ronnie, I can't defend that. Yeah. No, same, you could Same way I can't defend Trump. How he yes, takes or, sex. Yes. You know? But, a female but, woman. And, but, but Trump was president of the United States. But, um, wh and what I a president of head of the democratic Western world. Well, for, 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 for you and me? Me would want to leave that <laughs> when he's in there. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't even go there with the yeah. Trump. I would consider, I would stay with us in terms of the problems that we are having. And in connecting the dots, we saw what played out yesterday in Parliament. <clears throat> so moral and ethical values are... <laughs> It's, it's, it's just mind-boggling what is happening and these small things, when we connect the dots with these small things, we're then setting a stage in terms of when the ordinary person go out. Because who invited this man to parliament? Why did the he do minister? so? Yeah, why did he do so? Because what? of the whole, he, the yeah, prime minister has house? been quoting this man about Radam, 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 right? And then... Um, what name Radam? And that, Radam. yeah, that in its own way has it's, its word own connotation too, right? Yes, sure. And it's a saying that this guy has been using, and and the prime minister prime minister has picked it up. But it's 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 not only it, it is a trend though in terms of moral values though. Um, Sir, it's not only the actions of the PM, but of most parliamentarians. There, the things that they say at times are not um, becoming. I remember in Parliament uh, when Dr. Peter Phillips gave. Um, I don't remember who was on the other side of the finger, right? Both fingers, to be precise. <laughs> and, you know, the other things that they have said, when you look at um, music, musicians that at, that perform on government, um, some government shows, they are the same musicians which are glorifying um, killing and also speaks ill of women and whatever. These are the same musicians. And when you look at government agencies, like Ministry of Tourism and the other ones, they are sponsoring uh, other private shows with these artists. Why do you so think? There is a, Why do you think? There is a total disconnect. Well, this is we it. don't see the attachment. Well, because I don't think we have decided what kind of society, what kind of values m must undergird the society that we want to live in. No, say, say that not, not all enough, or not enough of us. Yeah. Because there are a lot of us in the society yeah. who know where we should yeah. be going, yeah. who know where we want to yeah. go, but there is not enough yeah. of us. Yeah. And, 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 and mm -hmm. I think if you, if you go back to what Steve is saying, it's not that that moral standards are not in Jamaica. Right? But it is there. We're, well, yeah, but I mean, the, the, the situation, I agree with you, it is there. But, but when, when it is not promoted, when it is not, when it is compromised, it doesn't help at all. And, no, and, yeah. and, our, and, and that's where I think we are. Belie, our actions belie our words. So this year we would have had a, um, a prior breakfast, if you remember, if Every you year. recall. Yes. Yes. And the heads of um, businesses were right. at that prior breakfast. Uh -huh. But yes, most of them, their companies are the same one which are sponsoring shows, which have the artists who are glorifying killing. So how do we justify our actions? Yeah. Our actions are speaking loud. We, our word is saying one thing. Yeah, they're, they're on the talk shows and the different areas to saying that our murder rate is high and if it's taken away from production and costs us in GDP, but yet still they are the same ones who are putting money into the musicians, into the pocket of the musicians who are singing about killing. So, you know, which flows back down. We saw the connection 
between a musician who is now incarcerated and um, funding, funding criminal activity. Dr. McKay wrote an article in The Observer on Sunday about that connection, and, and we all know of the connections, right? There are more than one artist in, in incarcerated right now who have, have had a direct connection with the gang underworld, and yet still we continue to fund these people that Sir Charles spoke about that are sensible people and have moral values and so forth. They continue to give them money. How do we justify it? Steve, as bad as it, it sounds, we are not in the majority at that side. You cannot say the majority of Jamaica, even the leadership is not. The church is not. No, the church, hello, I'll stop there. The church, I admire the religious community that you are connected with, this, the Adventists, for their strong emphasis on family life. Yes. Other churches have it too, including the one that I'm connected with. But they are marginal now. The fact is that I don't think 25% of Jamaicans go to church regularly. Now, that's not to say that, only, that, that you can't equate church membership or attendance and you with, 20, with, you have, with you values. Have, you have 25% mm -hmm. more different church with all sorts of names. Well, hear me now. But the fact of the matter is that, that, that there is a, 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 a slackness and a looseness about personal relationships. I'm, and I'm no prude, but I'm saying that if you are going to raise up children righteously, there has to be some standards, there has to be some commitment, there has to be abiding relationships. And don't ask us if, we, if, if those are lacking. No. And it is true. I was, I was happy, Steve, um, recently on the university campus. A group of the students there took a stand against one DJ man who was invited to some fete they're having up there. But the man is That's a man who... irony of ironies. Yes. <clears throat> the, man, the man is a, so, is a, is a confirmed misogynist and, 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 and right. tolerant and of violence. So what you do? Speaks you bring, about you, you, being fully done. Also speaks about fully done, being fully done, but yet still yep. he's being invited, invited to the, to the seat of academy. My God. So it... It doesn't make, but but just to go back to what um, Sir Charles said about um, the churches, have the churches said we're having a private breakfast, but you ABC company, we are not inviting you because you sponsored a show last year that had this artist who glorified killing. So we then, haven't reached that. So are, haven't you, reached are, that you, are you are you on going to send an offering to the church? So, no, no, but you see, that's the thing. Uh, are you going to send offering so to maintain the church and the, and the workers in the no, church I am when you block off the little what money? I'm, what I'm going to do is to is to be critical of those who, sh who those of us, those of us. I'm including myself critical of myself and others when we fall short of, of, of setting no, no, the standards. I, I don't want to make that, a joke that your, out of it. That man. your parents taught you. I don't want to make a joke out of uh, it. But if they are said in joke, there yeah. are lots of us who think that way. Yeah. And there are lots but, of us but who I want need to, put to a, be re I want to put a proposal to you. Yeah. Yes. My view is that in the in the uh, in the area in the time of right after slavery, Steve McDonald, when mm -hmm. the people like your ancestors, certainly Pernell Charles' ancestors, yes, took to the hills, the crown lands moving away from the estates. Now, obviously, I'm making <coughs> great generalizations, eh? And developed families, may not have been married, but they were stable, yes? Right. Around church, around school, around benevolent society, around all large sometimes, um, all, all groupings, JAS, um, taxpayers, tax and rate payers, <coughs> All of those. That was when Jamaica was developing a, a sturdy culture with, with with values to do with work, to do with relationship, to do with savings, to do with production. Yes. And we have broken that in the last 80 years. The bauxite industry, one element of it and much more. And we have we are too close to Ma to the culture of Miami for our own good. Yes, and right. we are infected with plenty of infections. The political divisiveness, which which Pernell and I uh, have been part of and are, are anxious to move away from, yes, is another element. We we need to decide what are the values, what are the principles that are really going to strengthen us as a people. 
and, and, to, do, and to educate those do. and entertain those rather than saying that, speaking of them, but going in the opposite direction as you are pointing right. out. Right. And in addition to well, that, I'm just going to put up on, man on, in a on something for. That, on that Sir Charles said with regards to the funding. And um, I'm just going to turn it a bit. So in the 90s, if you attended stage shows or any show, whenever... Um, they as they would say that whenever they the artists wanted a forward or wanted to get some um crowd response they would talk about um hurting gays the gays responded and the gays responded by starting to block their shows what has happened since that no artist no i i can't recall seeing an artist doing that on any stage show anymore and some are, some are even the more hardcore artists had to come out and apologize so i'm saying that to say that if there is the will we can change what is happening but we have to come up and say that enough is enough the church for example i'm going back there will have to say hey you are your company is sponsoring this type of show with this artist who is doing this or there's musician on there music producers on your show which is doing this, and we won't have any association to do with you anymore. The government of Jamaica have to say, listen, Mr. Telephone Company, you are sponsoring a show with these artists, and we're going to cancel our contract with you. We can change it once we have the will. It is possible. It has been done. We saw it in the 90s. So it can be done. But what you said, Sir Tweet, is very important. We need to get back to uh, determine what is right, not only say it, but then put our actions behind it. Well, let me just say this. All that you say, I agree. But the implementation is not as easy as saying it because of the various things that happen. Ronnie, when I was small, I've never heard some of the, the singing tricking in church. Yeah. In fact... I never had to hear Adventists clapping. Yes. But but the, the clap now? Well, you know, there's some things that are that are that are benign and other things that are not. And this this the the the, the, the fact is that oh, oh, the majority of our young people are growing up in a situation where they then they don't know what 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 is best for them. And it sounds terribly uh, patrician and, and, and elitist to say what is that somebody is telling them what is best for them. I met a group of young people the other day, yes, working class young people, uh, many of their parents, or they come from situations of unemployment. And it were about 50 or, or so of them. And they, none of them have any experience dealing with married couples. They, they do, they, their experience of, of of creating a nuclear family. I'm not saying the nuclear family is the only stable institution at all. I don't say that. But it, 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 something as 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 a permanent value, as 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 family life, they they really don't know about it at all. You know. Well, let me tell you one other thing that bothers me. So how we, how we going? when I look at myself, yeah. my family, yeah. and country people like me. Yes, sir. Right. Ah, uh, well said. We had to go to morning prayer. Yes, sir. Get up from five o'clock, cold like. Yes. <laughs> uh -huh. And you had to join the church yeah. man. Yeah. And you had to sing. I remember Portia said she had to go to church twice on a Sunday. Well, yeah. but in, yeah. in, in, we had to go church Friday night for Sabbath evening. Uh -huh. I had to go to church sun Saturday yeah. and go back to young people meeting. Saturday evening, yes, and you have to watch the clock, yeah, because you come out before the sun gone and you're in trouble, yeah. Now, all of this thing, new young generation come up, it's forgetting all of that, okay. And substituting some of the guys it with that what? are singing, substituting it with what? Some of the, hold on, peanut some, man, some of the guys who are singing this, this song that Steve is talking about uh -huh. and not selling enough record, mm -hmm. join the church, oh, good, and them singing, yeah, make them go on, that's good. I yeah. believe in conversion. Yeah. Hold on. But the songs that they've sing in the church <coughs> is also a jump up song. Well, no, I don't mind the jump. B David the, the King. I don't know how <coughs> much membership it get in. Well, I'm not sure. I don't the, the numbers wouldn't 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 concern me. But, but it's it's the principles, Steve McDonald, that we're after, isn't yes. it? Yes. 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 And and we can start with and we can you start you ask how we can change it. And I'm going to use a cliche. <laughs> Michael Jackson said, "The man in the mirror." 
we just have to start with the man in the mirror the pm um the, you know the, I, I i can't believe the pm speak of so eloquently of um values and attitudes and so forth but yet still for whatever re reason he has this person there who is the total opposite no i'm sure that the pm could not take that video that that man posted and and show it to his mother i'm sure of that well, what and that, should be, the test. that what? should be the test in terms of our moral values and attitudes and the things that we do and let our actions um and let, let that guide our actions what and does, we start from there what did he mean when he said that uh help is on his way to you know upgrade social media I have I have no no clue where um, in terms of that regards um, in terms of because I'm not too sure how um, we would unless you're we're going to be blocking certain things and so forth you know but what's the sense of blocking when you're going to take the person who have said these things and and, and parade them in Parliament well I think it's very good that this gentleman apparently was helped to recover from a fire have uh, a fire yeah yes. so it says um, but that that speaks to another that speaks to another inefficiency in our <laughs> system um sir Twitch, if you if if you'll allow me um it shouldn't take take the 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 the, the um the efforts the, it shouldn't take the prime minister to get involved in a social system our system should our social network should be safety net should be set up in such a way that if that person happened in in Lennox be goods, we should have social service that that person should be able to go to. How many people will be able to get to the prime minister? Yeah, so the, if the prime minister was not able to get involved, then he would not have received any any help. I so could that's tell you, it's a, a failure it's, it's, in it's, the system. Well, it's good to say we should have it, but we don't have it. Yeah, but we are we and, moving and, towards and, it. Well, we should we try to. Are we moving get, towards it? Because yeah. because because the, what Steve is pointing is that we do not have an effective social security system yeah. in Jamaica, and the truth is that that if, if you get devastated by a fire, unless you can catch the eye of the prime minister or one or two other people, food for the poor, yes, yeah. you're salt. I I I can give you a t adequate testimony on that no <clears throat> we're talking therefore the, the, this is one of the values is it a, do we do we prize the well-being of the of, of all our Jamaican people or only some the ones we notice this is a big question you know Steve it certainly is mm -hmm. it certainly and is do we do we do we organize our economy and uh, our political relations in ways that inure the flourishing of all or only of some. Why is it that we can have such a rapturous applause for a budget in Parliament when in fact, whichever, budget, whichever side's budget, yes, when in fact Jamaica is becoming more and more unequal? What, 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 it, what, it, what, what, what satisfaction can you have in that, please? It, it certainly hmm. is. And, you know, as we mentioned, and even as you pointed out that um, the prime minister had helped Pino Tread, you know, what are we doing? Yeah, we had such a large budget. They say it was one of the largest budget, one point something trillion dollar. But yes, it was social services and, and safety nets. Some, is there some to good things sure that the, P, the peanut treads off Jamaica yeah, who yeah. have a problem yeah. are See, able some, to, to solve that does. problem without having to go into the prime minister and as as, per, as sir pernell is a farmer he will he will appreciate the fact that if you don't plant that seed you won't be able to reap the crop yeah but so we need to plant the social services put that in place well what i i was just told a while ago is that this month has helped some people who are burnt out so badly and the Prime Minister had to, in his opinion, use R him R as him. a symbol of what he wants to develop in the society. Oh dear. The help. That is and incorrect. Uh, regardless that is, that regardless incorrect. of the fact that he might sing some songs that are out of the way. <laughs> no, he no, may no. just start to no, sing no, good no, songs. No, 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 Pernet, sir, Pernet, don't you're, let you're, anybody oh, you're stretching. you down. <laughs> <laughs> if you have not seen the video, uh -huh. if you have not seen no, the video, I have not. you have not even... take a look. Yeah, I saw right. it. And, and I'm sure that if what you sit nonsense. down and share it with, it's not something that you would want 
to be said of anyone to say of your daughters. Steve, I can, would want to sit down and watch with them. I we cannot, need to have cer certain moral values, and we we can we need to stop amen. watering down things. Got you some. See, Steve, I, can tell you, I I didn't even know of this situation. Yes, yeah, okay. I'm going to take so, a chance and look at it, and, you know, and, and but, we'll but, hear uh, more. It's interesting. Steve McDonald, thank you so much. Strong it was comment. always a pleasure. It's Keep always coming. a pleasure. And thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. Have a great Steve McDonald, founder of Yard Market in Toronto, man talking up his Jamaicanness. We'll soon come back when we do. Dennis Chung talks to us about productivity and wages and the surge forward. Is there one? This is the Bridge 99. 1.35 in Jamaica. It's Wednesday afternoon. This is the Public Eye with Pernal Charles and myself. This is the Bridge 99 FM to the diaspora, the Jamaican diaspora all over the world. Welcome, Dennis Chong. Hi, how are you doing, Ronnie? How are you doing, Pernal? Good well, to well, see you two guys together, man. Yes, well, we're here for a pur together for a purpose, you know. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And, <laughs> and, we, and we get to like it, and we just decide say that it can work. So we, 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 want, we, we want it to spread, you know. You know, you, you know Ronnie, this morning, uh, is, I was doing an interview this morning, you know, and I actually used a quote you had you had inspired me with years ago. Remember when you were on power, Ronnie, and you said that we cannot truly be rich and if everybody around us is poor? Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that, thank that, you for that, that stuck with me. <clears throat> yeah, we, man. <laughs> you you made some comments about the recent wage settlement, particularly for the public service, but the, it's it's yeah. wider than that, and the connection with productivity. And respectfully, Pernell and I both really want to 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 thank you for that because our concern has been that we are spending more money on public services and generally, but. It, it, no one, no one except people like Dennis Chung are talking about increasing the output, the value for what we are paying more for. Is 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 that a legitimate concern of the of the country? How can it be avoided? Well, Ronnie, I am hoping it is a legitimate concern. I think that the presentation that were made, particularly by the Prime Minister, has some things in it that will increase productivity. But we still have not addressed the matter of productivity in the public sector as much as we should. There are some things that have been done in terms of reorganizing, like the, the, the way the wage structure is um, and, you know, centralizing certain things that are decentralized. But what we need, really need to do is we need to improve the productivity of workers and pay them for that productivity improvement. And I think if we were, were to do that, then we would come out of this cycle of negotiating every every year. And you, you have always spoken about it, Ronnie, when you were on power, that what we really need is, is productivity in the public sector. That, that That is really how you make people's lives better, you know, by making them earn based on their productivity. That is Everybody else, I mean, when you look at a man who runs a business, right, and both of you would know it, if you don't make a profit, you don't eat. But if you, when you make profits, you make profits. Well, but Dennis, one of the problem, <laughs> what a problem, and I wish I had you at the bargaining table when I was negotiating, yeah. because I used to present the company's balance sheet. And if the company don't make any money, it is difficult to ask them for wage increase. But if they make a whole heap of money, mm. then we have to yeah. ask a big thing. So now, apply that to the government of Jamaica, Mr. Charles. Huh? Stop right there. Apply that to the government oh, of oh, Jamaica. I'm coming right through there. because that's exactly where I'm going. <clears throat> okay. Since I've been around and I've been in the parliament 51 okay. years. God bless you. Many of the prime ministers and the ministers of finance has been asked by our loan agents. Uh-huh our loan masters, mm -hmm. that let's just say, that's the public sector. Mm -hmm. The public sector is burdensome. It is mm -hmm. eating up money. It is not working. It is efficient. None of them will touch it. And that's why I congratulate this guy. Mm -hmm. This prime, this minister, well, give the prime minister and minister sure. of finance, sure. right? Together. Right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> For them to even try it and that this morning, mm -hmm. He can say that 95% mm -hmm. 
after people have signed on. Mm-hmm. But that's, yeah. a, that, that, hold on, that, hold that, that's half of the job. Hold on. That, exactly. Mm-hmm. That's the half of the job. Mm-hmm. He's, he has said he's mm-hmm. on the way uh-huh. balancing the workforce mm-hmm. with productivity. Where's, I haven't heard that. I'm so glad that you have heard it. Yeah. Well, Dennis, have you heard it? The, the arc of, of total factor productivity in this country, public and private sector, has been going down by 1% since we became independent. Yeah, well, well, yes. Since, so, so, um, so I don't, I, I mean, if the minister is saying otherwise, oh, God bless him. But I haven't heard that in any of the speeches. Yeah, he, he did he, he did speak to productivity. Oh. Right? What are Maybe the specific measures? Maybe not factor productivity, but he did, he did speak something <clears throat> to productivity. What right? I think? And I think that what he has done uh-huh. is, is very good, right? Um, the, the truth, though, is that we are not going to get anywhere with productivity unless we address labor market re- reform. And the IMF said it in the 2013 agreement. Yes. It was one, one of the, the biggest things that should have happened. And what year is labor this, market please, reform. Mr. Chong? What that year, was 2013. What, and this is 2023. So 10, yes. year, ten years have passed. Holy for baby born and, and, and okay, holy for people die. And we're still yeah, not there. Was, Can we face... And, 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 a, a committee was set up with Marshall Hall heading yes. it. God rest him. And Marshall was and doing a lot of work around it, but uh-huh. we still can't implement it. Yeah. Uh, because you, you, the concept is simply, you know, I mean, the concept is that if you have collective bargaining agreement, right, the person who produces 100 units mm-hmm. gets the same compensation like the person who produces 10 units. Yes. And therefore, what will happen is that everybody will start producing 10 units. Yes. And that's effectively what has happened. But isn't that true um, of the, the, the entire state public service? Sir? We, we have. Well, it's more than. Yeah, and, yeah. And the yeah, entire yeah, society, in fact. If, yeah, the society. If you could generalize. Right, that's effectively what has because happened. Because go right, and, drill and, deeper and, for me, Dennis, and, because we have a sense that, and, and there's, there's some historical legitimacy to this, that we are all sufferers, and that really what we do is we've been, we've been suffering so long that the increase that we managed to, to bargain for, Pernell bargain for, is what we deserve. We are entitled to it. Don't talk to me about any more work, Mr. Chong, Mr. Charles. I was supposed to get this long time. You look how me I suffer. Yeah, but what Dennis, what 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 is happening in this thing that Clark has done? Doesn't change that at all. Right? Nigel Clark. Doesn't change a thing. Yes, it does, because oh. it reduced the workforce. No? Which, which how many how oh. many jobs have been superannuated? My understanding uh-huh. is that this reducing the workforce and increasing productivity. I don't see that. This is what he's presenting. But no, I don't see that. We're spending 38% of our budget on, 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 on emoluments but, with but, no no relationship to, but, to greater output. But, we are st- if you, and, and sorry, Pernell, and w- in, that is proof of the fact this public sector is not the only factor here, of course, but that when we look, Dennis Chong, at the projections for GDP growth going down, Yes, we are, we are stuck in the one and two percent range. Five and four is is as Don Robotham says that, is that, that, that's, dead that's cold in, that's, in, in 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 the coffin. What what yeah, is that? Where's the progress? How, how what what do you say to your grandchildren, Mister Chong, if you have them? I do. Pernell does. What do we say to them about this country and about their commitment to it? If that is the prospect that we are setting ourselves and we're all beating our, 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 our desk in Parliament and saying how wonderful we are and how great um, salvation is near. Yeah, but well, for well, Dennis, that, yeah, that, Dennis, before you that, answer, that, 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 because yeah, go ahead, I think that <clears throat> the public sector, the private sector controls the economy when it comes to production. And you cannot show that from the government or, or, or the politician. No, you know, right? sir. You're no, not no, right. hold on, hold on, hold on. Ronnie. So long as they're making a profit, uh-huh. it's all right. And uh-huh. that is where I so, upset with so them. So you get Because they can triple up what they're doing. Let's hear Dennis. Dennis, let's go. Yeah. So, I mean, that has been the, the problem that we've had as an economy for a very long time. Mm. Um, change um, it? And, and uh, we, we have not, apart from a few years in the 80s, mm-hmm. we haven't really seen much growth in the country. right? And a lot of what happened in the 80s was driven by debt, right? Mm-hmm. In terms of the growth. 
Uh, but we really have not seen an improvement in productive base in any real sense. The budget that was recently presented, though, the one that just presented, <clears throat> I think it lays a foundation for that growth. And, and this is how I see this budget, right? Um, it is something, and, and why I like the budget is it's something I've always been talking about, the focus on capital and infrastructure. Um, the, the, the fact that we are, are being fiscally prudent and bringing the debt to, to GDP down. So I think the foundation is there. But oh, there are certain understand. things where, that where need is to where is the, What is the practical foundation? Because it's good to pay the debt down. Well, I, well, I, I, well, I agree let me tell with you, that. Let, let me but tell the you. fact of the matter is that people starve in the meanwhile. What yeah, you're saying, Ronnie, what you're saying to the ordinary Ronnie, person Ronnie, is Ronnie, that you Ronnie, oh, no, no, Ronnie. you listen. It's it is is is, is is that you must ban your belly and 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 live on on whatever the, the, that strategy can afford you, and one day you'll be free. What the hell? Not you, Mister no, Chung. Ronnie, 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 yeah. Ronnie, 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 Ronnie. Yes, we sir. cannot. We, we 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 can't. It's not going to change overnight because of the years of abuse. Someone who is in an abusive relationship. Even if you present them with honey, right, they're still going to think it's vinegar because of the abuse that they've had. And this is the situation that we find ourselves in. Boy, right? it's a hard Dennis, I am First thing to, we I, need to, What a statement. I'm going to throw one at you because you are a private sector man. <clears throat> Where, in your opinion, the growth that we are talking about, Rani and myself, that to put the country forward should come from? Is it government? All right. Or, or All right. That, that's, a, that's a very good question. So I think that we're going to go back to 1% to 2% growth, right? Um, we're not going to get back to the levels of growth we were before. How are we going to improve the, the growth in this country? You is mean, by raising productivity, you, right? You mean, you mean 5 and 4 was a how, same five? How, no, how do we raise productivity? Productivity has to be raised number one by investing in your capital infrastructure because you're talking about total factor productivity yeah. total factor productivity is capital and labor primarily you, and, and and therefore that's why i like what was said in terms of investing in the capital infrastructure what, Where what the foundation is hold on to, in, what kind of capital infrastructure because oh and, and indeed i'm looking the, at you will understand why at education where is it where is where is the capital invested in education in this year's budget mr chong uh, but but ronnie ronnie, no, no, ronnie yes on, ronnie. i mean tell me but ronnie you're not there, giving you me a know. chance to answer sorry <laughs> go ahead Ron. go ahead yeah, Dennis. Sorry. go ahead so so um I think the capital infrastructure I'm talking about is is very importantly the ones that's on the roads primarily. If you look at the US, the US started to really develop when they developed their highway system. Oh right. Okay. So I think that is very important. Uh -huh. Also, the investment in human capital. Yes, that's so what my interest is. The, 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 the move, the move to, to, to remove the fees from heart and integrate heart more into everything, yeah. I think is critical. Could I stop you there? The problem heart, that... I think, heart, I think, needs to do a lot more in terms of planning with PIOJ. Yes. Can, I, this, can I pause this, you there and ask you a question? Just mm -hmm. to give you my experience. The problem with 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 the, the people going into the higher levels of the heart to heart program, getting higher skills, was not the fees. You know, the problem was was literacy. Right, right. No, I and I agree with you. So if Ronnie, you're not dealing right? that, you could take away but, all the fees. Yeah, yeah but, but Ronnie, you, but Ronnie, but Ronnie, but Ronnie, but Ronnie, giving semi literate associate degrees does Ronnie, not does Ronnie, not Ronnie, is not capital Ronnie, investment. Oh, he has an answer. He has an answer. Ronnie. Mm. Doing that with heart is not mutually exclusive to doing the other things, you know. Wait, and I agree with you, the other things you need to be me. done. So, so, for example, so for example, the idea about not requiring guarantees for students Good. on for excellent. people on path. That excellent. is an excellent, I agree with you. That's excellent. Excellent. Those are the things we need to do. So I am not saying, Ronnie and Pernell, mm. that everything has been done. But let us not make good the the, the, the enemy of perfect. You know, I, I, I right? don't agree there. Because but let my us problem start is not a with greater what budget. We can start with. Right? And let us work on those things. And this is how we lay a foundation. We're not going to get the foundation perfect the right time, one time. But 
at least let us lay. There's more that needs to be done. For example, I think that there needs to be a lot more focus on a good public transportation system. Yes. That, for me, is the most productive thing initiative that you can engage sure. in in Jamaica today. And we're doing, but you we're, can't have public and transportation we're doing exactly the opposite. if you don't have roads. We're doing exactly and the that's opposite. True. Don't we, have need, roads. we need roads also. We need the roads, but we're doing exactly the opposite. We're going to put, put between 10 and $15 billion in an inefficient public transportation system. Yes? But running... <laughs> Where, where, hold on, oh, hold on. You, you can't. It, yeah, but you, you, don't look on just. There's a logic. Don't look on just the buses as transportation. You know, we have thousands of cars yes. that come into the system, yes. and that's transportation. Sure, but they, hold that, on, but let, let's listen to me one more thing mm -hmm. because I want to catch Dennis before him leave. Mm. Because we discussed this morning about shortening the work week, mm -hmm. shortening the hours, shortening this. Shortening that. Dennis, I want to throw one at you. If, you. if you're going to give me a four day work week and you give me a seven hour, and I said four seven is 28, let us say a 30 hour, <coughs> a 30 hour week, right? Can't we double our, our, our production by doubling our workforce? Can't we bring on two 30 hour? Two shifts? Two shifts. Oh. I mean, is, 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 the, public yeah, yeah, no, is, the, is the public sector ready for that sort of thing? <laughs> we, we can do that. But, but the, the thing is, the, the thing to consider is, is there the demand for that, number one? And can we afford the cost of it? Because um, if you're going to pay, remember the way we pay people now, you know, it's not so much to do with hourly rates. <clears throat> right? Exactly. Um, so... And that's why I speak about the labor market reform, mm -hmm. right? But I agree that those things need to be looked at, yeah, right? Tell me now. That is how you get into productivity now, because if you're paying persons for 20 or 28 hour work week or 30 instead of 40, right. right? What we're paying people for now is just a work week. Give me the quid pro quo. Right. We have made large numbers of persons um, who were contract employees into per, uh, appointed persons, permanent employees. What right. are we going to get in exchange for that? Well, the, the truth is that, you know, I, I, from my perspective, and certainly when I look at from like an NSO in me. Have you ever had a permanent I, job, Mr. Chung? If I've ever had a permanent one? Yeah. Yeah, in my lifetime, yes. Okay, good. Yeah. I'm pleased for that. Um, I've never had but, one. But, 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 my, my job has but, always but, been but, related to performance. The reason why you never have a permanent oh, yes, job. Yes, you know. yes, yes, yes. The reason why I, you never I, have I a agree. permanent job is because having several jobs, you make more money. Well, what, 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 I'm, but I'm you're, concerned. You're a, I'm a concerned. lawyer, I'm, a no, person. No, maybe so, but uh, uh, I'm concerned uh, uh, about... Uh, a parliamentarian. I'm concerned about the fact that we are paying people. We are, we are appointing people to positions where they virtually cannot be fired. And don't argue with me about that. The civil service rules are such. The, the education oh, code yeah, is such. Yeah. Yes? And we are... We, well, we, if, if, that, if, if that's how you're looking at it, right? I've it, never but, had but a what, are, what other ways there to... <laughs> <laughs> but Dennis, Dennis, I'd, I'd say to run it. And we are that, paying for it for what? But, but that is not where productivity is being looked at. But, sir... The every, productivity is being looked at in the investment. Every in, aspect of hold investment. Hold one minute, one minute. Hold one minute. Right now... Yeah. The whole diaspora uh -huh. is asking for food from Jamaica. Yes, sir. And we can't produce it. Yes, sir. And, right? they, but, and but that all that relates to the public sector because people can't get land to lease, oh. can't get capital for agriculture, can't get permits to 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 to, to export ganja. The, it, the public sector, the public sector impinges on every aspect of private sector functioning. Yeah, Help me, that's Dennis true. Jung. It's well, true. No, that's true. That's true. The then if that is so, does, let us uh, uh, let us let, come and join us, uh, <laughs> tree man. Because to be honest with you, you're not getting anywhere if we can't get the investment going. Well, I'm telling you, but this is what you face. Every I'm in business, and I can't function a day without intersecting with a public sector, which may or may not favor me. But by and large, is is I have to say rife with petty corruption. If you are in business and you don't have a points here or there or there, where do you think you're going to get? Dennis Chung, tell me I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a gross liar. I'm not, you know. 
No, no it not, is true. You're not a big liar. It's a small true. one. <laughs> no, it, it, listen to me. But, but, <clears throat> I can tell you the it's agencies true, true. That, that I intersect with which don't, which don't behave like that. I want to really big up the National Health Fund, for example. They're efficient people. They go straight to the point. They help. But... I'm, sometimes there are agencies, if I call their name, I'm going to get my business in trouble, where you want to pay government money. Now you can't to, get yeah, you yeah. Can't, they, they won't accept it. They won't put you in a position where you can give them taxation money. That is, let, me we, ask, let, they, me, uh, let me ask oh you something God. for my own thing. Tell us a few Higher points right now here. in Jamaica where we can increase productivity in what area where the demand is. Wrong direction we're going. Give us a give us one um, or two of them, Dennis. I'll, I'll give you I'll give you two which I think can Im impact significantly. Yes. Number one, a good public transportation system. Yes. You cut down on your your import bill for oil. You have people not having to have car loans and 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 buy gas and all of that. So you're raising standard of living, right? Yes. You also have people moving much more efficiently. Yes. No economy can move without people moving, right? The second one, though, is to improve the, the, the public sector in terms of efficiency and more, more importantly, labor market reform. If you do those two things, right, then I think that you will get a big spin-off, right? Um, and, and, then, and then the whole thing of how you organize your, your 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 streets your society so i'll give you one example of, of productivity improvement that can take place with little or no effort right, just by having law and order if you look at this the hip strip in montego bay you can get a room now there for about 200 and something dollars a night us right if we were to make that hip strip into a pedestrian only um area no illegal vending really make the place nice invest in it you could get 500 and something dollars an hour here just by doing that that is productivity improvement what what right? do they do on the hip strip what is i've been here about the hip strip what what is done on it what is it what what's that panel what do they do on this hip strip you're talking about what what is on it well the hip strip right now it is a it is it is a a, a, a strip um a road in montego bay where you have a lot of hotels and um Glass entertainment for tourists and things mm. but but it's, it's not maintained properly no. and and once you get that order there then the desire for it will go up significantly i have a final question and, and for that, you that's how you improve it the 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 people who pernell used to represent and who are you used to represent um many of them um working at minimum wage levels over 60 percent of the workforce in jamaica is is there grateful for the increase recently but still facing inflationary tendencies plus the eight hundred thousand of working age who are outside of the labor force plus everybody else when we look forward to them particularly the young people dennis young what hope do we have can they achieve the life the life expectancy the life sufficiency of people like yourself ronald thwaites pernell charles in the near future do you see that no. emanating from from it. policies that we are? We have life expectancy increase. No, I don't see it right now. You don't see it right now. Well, you're an honest no. man. Yeah, and that I don't see you, it right will, now. you realize that that propels dissatisfaction, sadness. It affects relationship. It affects social conduct. It affects migration. It affects the diaspora who you and I are talking to in Pernell right now, and makes us makes us less than what we could be. There's nothing yeah. preventing yeah, no, us I, I, from, from fruitful I, I, life, all of us, you know. Except yeah, I agree. It, it, it does. Um, you, you, won't, you won't improve that <clears> until right. we improve the whole infrastructure of, of law and order. So let me tell you, now, can that be, who, 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 will, who will do that? Is that the function of one, of either a, a PNP or a JLP government, please, sir? No, it, it, it's a function. It's a function of all of us, yeah. Ronnie and, and who brings us all we, together? Then it's before well, you go. Well, somebody is asking. Can answer this question. Who 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 brings us all together? What what institution? What uh, what what connectivity do we have? Please. It it, mu it must be it must be inspired by the highest body of the Islam, which is Parliament. Yeah. Then yeah, before you go, somebody is quickly is. asking you to tell us a little about what you're talking about labor market reform. They want to just get a quick. 
understanding of what you talk. Last word before you go. Yeah, labor market reform is, is really changing your laws in such a way so that the laws reform um, reward productivity rather than, you know, right now you can catch a man stealing on camera and you just do one procedure wrong and he's in the right, right? Labor market reform is about putting your laws in place so that you reward people based on productivity, right? And also, not only that, that you 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 set up a system where people can have pensions and proper pensions. Revolutionary. Right? People can have proper health insurance. Yeah. People that is why we need education. to move people from contract, yes. right? And, and give people the education. Yeah. That is what labor market reform is. Dennis, time right? on us. And th thanks so much for the company here. And thanks for the very, very mature and sober analysis. Yeah, Grateful to you. No problem. And All to right. you, All the right. Honorable yes. Pernell Charles. And today, you today, 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 uh -huh. we still it talking and I want to hear you. Yes. Production. Yes. We'll come again next We're week. never going to let that let, 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 let one go. Danny, we have to we have to put that in a in a, in a song. We need to produce what, you know, what man, people man want sing. overseas Can and everywhere. Imagine? Thanks so much for your company and for your wisdom. Lafayne, Jeff, thank you so much. All the best to our, our listeners. Looking forward to the public eye next week. Stay tuned to The Bridge 99.